Hello and welcome to In the Court of the Winter Nave. We're getting there. We've got two, sh well, there's two more shows after this actually. <laughs> um, live at the Cap de, de Agd. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, South of France, basically. Um, and obviously the Frages show was on DVD. This is the show supporting Roxy Music through Portugal, Spain, and France. I don't know if maybe this was towards the end or towards the start. And obviously that was a big way of attracting new fans, playing with a with a trendy band that very very much matches the some of the uh, you know stylistically it's close enough, isn't it, to to mean something? I think somewhere in this you can hear someone shouting "fuck off." I think I think it's an indiscipline. Now that means actually that it's in Frasius and not on this show because sadly the final reel of this show is missing in classic style like some of the 70s stuff um, so what we have here is the first six track of this show the last three tracks are actually from the Frasius show which is on the DVD to make up a complete show sadly it's already a bridge show from what, what they were doing before because they're in a support act so there's only nine songs I mean it's not surprising that the band played better at their own gigs plus it was later in the tour so maybe they're more tired uh, the sound is much better than the band's own equipment though, so that, that's a reason to go for it. Uh, the other thing about the sound is Adrian Blue seems much more in your face. Might be just the mix, or the way it's recorded, or maybe it's Adrian Blue's performing differently. Difficult to say. The video is great, I think because it's on film. Loads of atmosphere, whereas you know the, the Live in Japan 84 is video. It's very videotaping, it doesn't have the, the atmosphere this one does, even though it's short. Um, so the, the video is definitely worth checking out. And this is cool too because we get a slightly different show. So yeah, both shows were filmed, but obviously they couldn't release the other one because it's a bit missing. Maybe, maybe one day we will get a beatbox, so I did that, um, which would feature the, the remaining footage that we haven't seen, and the Fraser show, and maybe the Munich show as well, which has never been released. Unfortunately, it's very easy to get hold of, but it, it's never been released. And all the other stuff as well from 82 and have a beatbox. Let's do that. Correction, it's one more show after this. There's only one more show after this, fortunately. Track one, of course, is The Waiting Man. A Waiting Man? Waiting Man, not The Waiting Man. What am I talking about? It sounds like seeing someone in a doctor's surgery. It might be le maybe less assured than the earlier shows, or it is more kind of in your face in a way, the performance. The change in sound is welcome because it's so well recorded. Uh, track two is Thelon Jinjit. Um, the actual tape plays at the start um, of, the, of the, the incident. Lower energy than, than, than previous shows, but that doesn't mean it's bad by any sense, um, obviously, because it was very, very intense on other shows. So it's still good, you know. Track three is Matakuda Sai, just a great song. What a fantastic song. Um, track four is The Sheltering Sky, always good. And on the video, it's great. You get to see Bill walking around with his, his woodblock thing. More straightforward than other versions, obviously, they're not going to go in funny directions because it's a prestigious gig and they're trying to attract fans and all that stuff. Uh, track five is Neil and Jacoby. I'm, I'm glad they've kept this in the set right to the end because it's the only time we get to hear it. Um, I love this song, it's only played on this tour, so you know. There's better versions, better versions elsewhere, but it's very well recorded, so yeah. How the hell does he do it? How does he sing and play that at the same time? I, I just cannot, it just doesn't compute, it's just ridiculous. Track six is Elephant Talk. Maybe less tight than some of the others, maybe. Controversial. But Baloo's really enjoying himself by now, so he's obviously warmed up with the crowd and, and, and all that stuff. Um, it's great. Baloo's fills are, are, are just great. Um, and for once, apart from when he actually gets the solo, there's a fripness to it. He does sound like Fripp. It can't be Fripp because Fripp's playing something else, but it, 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 it's interesting that, I don't know why. Uh, track seven, we're on to the other show now, so that's actually the end of the Cap Agd show. That's all we've got of it. Uh, it's in Discipline from the DVD. How many drummers produced listenable drum solos? It's a good question, isn't it? You know, not many, not really any, but Bill Bruford does. Um, and it, I mean, uh, it gets shorter and longer, but really by drum solo standards, it's actually very short. It's astonishing how long drum solos can be at rock concerts. Um, it's more about giving people a break, obviously. One moment, it almost sounds like we're returning to Waiting Man, actually. Very world music in, good, in the good sense of the world music, not, oh God, it's 80s world music, in the, in the good sense. It's so strange how the synth drums don't grate. They should. It should be horrible laziness, and it, it isn't. It's just really good. So yeah, my memory is there's someone shouting fuck off in the audience. But the crowd are with him. And his performance, you can tell, is, is responding to the audience. Um, so that's good. So there's a lot of positive feedback from the audience as well. So, you know. Track 8, Heartbeat. 
Uh, this is a good one. Again, I never, don't really get the point of the X Great Live kind of thing. You have to be there, I suppose. And track nine is Lark's Tongues in Aspic Part Two. Really twangy on this recording. Um, but Baloo's really clear. It's great to have such clarity, but it does mean Fripp isn't clear at all. <laughs> he's, he's just right down there, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's Live the Cap Dag. That was, that was club number four, actually. Um, interesting. So well, first time club release from 82, so that's important. See you next time.